when we got the data for the Fitzgerald itself, the lines, plans, the engine arrangement, the, uh, the weather model, we were really keen on uh, recreating the realism of every event. For all intents and purposes, you will be on board the Edmund Fitzgerald. Well, we're going to feel a gentle lifting now as the unit okay. rises up on its hydraulic, uh, hydraulic right, yeah, there it goes. The ship's simulator weighs roughly 25 tons. Its hydraulics are mounted on a six-degree motion base to precisely imitate the movement of the vessel through the storm. 3D projectors display a 360-degree view from the bridge. This is typical of what you would find steaming along in about a two or three foot sea. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to feel much in a big ship. No, like you're not going to feel very much. Heavily laden uh, and deep in the water. This is, this is a typical experience. Jim, if we can pick up the sea state now, we'd increase some of the, uh, the wind as well. And with that kind of a load of iron ore on board, the vessel would have set pretty low in the water. One thing I'm really noticing is just how the waves are stretching out over the length of the ship. You know, you got one wave at the front and one wave at the back, and man, that would put a lot of force in the middle of the ship. We've got to look at that kind of evidence, completely shredded. You're getting water that's covering the vents, uh, the vents into the tanks. And we're twisting. And we're twisting. Yeah, you can feel the boat twist. Certainly, the hatch covers have to be doing their job or you're in trouble. Always. The broaching seas uh, on deck, a lot of force uh, breaking off anything that's not really, really, really well secured. And we got to think that the Fitz was seeing at least at least 10 meter waves that night. Not all 10 meters, but the odd one would definitely be. With still the possibility that there was the odd freak or rogue wave. Jim, can we get the maximum sustained wind speed? 